All right, today starts my first session of planning for how I'm going to root everything within the engine bay. In my last video, I did kind of a schematic analysis to determine what components I would need and kind of where they would go in sequence or parallel to each other. Uh, in this video, I'm just gonna go over how I plan to incorporate that into the actual engine bay. After a little while of thinking about it, I've come up with three of what I think are the best or most practical locations to place a catch can. The first of which is where most people would put it, especially on the, uh, the three series vehicles, which is right here at the back of the intake manifold, um, right in front of where the cowling would be. I think the three series cowling comes up to almost halfway halfway up the engine, where on the Z4, uh, I got the benefit of having the wide open engine bay. The nice thing here is that there is a, a place to put it. And actually, um, I should mention the catch can that I chose is the Burger Motorsports double baffle catch can. I'll throw up a picture of it now. It has not arrived in the mail yet, so I do have a, uh, a stand-in prop. It's, I think, 4.4 inches long and 2.7 inches in diameter. So this will just stand in for now for planning purposes. So you can see right here, it fits pretty well. Um, one downside is it would be rubbing on this wiring loom, which is, I believe, the ignition wiring loom. The other problem is that serviceability would be really difficult because there isn't enough room underneath this, where this can would mount, to be able to remove the bottom portion to empty it. So this, this location is pretty much a no-go. The next location and where I originally wanted to place it was right back here between the two tower strut braces because it just perfectly nests right in there and I have two nice hard mount locations to mount a bracket. This runs into the same problem as before. There is just no way to empty the can out. I'd have to remove the whole thing and that's kind of a pain. I mean, the whole point of having the dropout bottom is to make it more easily serviceable. The other benefit and the reason why I wanted this location originally is because it's so close to the outlet of the valve cover and then it would go, you know, straight down underneath the manifold. It, for the plumbing, it would be the easiest and shortest and simplest way to do it, but I just don't think it's going to work there because of the bottom clearances. So the third option, and I, this is what I'm going to decide to go with, is on this side of the car here there is um, a provision for some accessory that's not equipped on this car. Forgive me, I don't know what actually goes here on other cars. I was almost thinking maybe it's the power steering, but I don't think any of these cars came with the hydraulic power steering. These all have electric power steering. So I'm going to mount a bracket on either of these two studs here, and I will be placing it here. The question is, do I want to just do the easy thing and put uh, just a piece of uh, rectangle bar out like this? But now I'm running into that clearance problem at the bottom where it's very, very close to some AC lines. So then I can raise it up, but that makes the the bracket a little bit more complicated. So that's I'm actually going to be making that bracket today. I don't need this piece to make that at least the riser portion of the bracket. The other nice thing about this location is it does make the plumbing relatively easy because it can just go up behind the heat shield. I can put um, another bracket here to hold the two lines. Um, the tricky part is one of them is gonna have to do an immediate U-turn into here. How that's gonna work out, I haven't decided yet. I can probably find some brass fittings. It's not gonna look pretty but I can make it work. And then the other one is just super easy. It goes underneath the intake manifold and splits into those two um, inputs between cylinders, what is it, four and five and one and, or two and three. So that's the plan for now. I'll probably just throw in some time-lapse footage of me making a bracket for this. And that's really all there is to it for today. Again, this, this part of the process is pretty easy. The tricky part is going to be determining what size of fittings I need to use for the the PCV lines or the, the breather lines here. Uh, it's very difficult to measure what the uh, 
fittings are, you can just barely make it out right in there. And the other one breaks off right there. Um, without removing the manifold or removing the oil filter housing, it's impossible to get an actual measurement of that. Within the next uh, week or so, I'm actually gonna be replacing the oil filter and oil cooler housing gaskets because uh, it is leaking a little bit down the back of the engine and on the front face of the engine. And the nice thing is once you have this off, you have very easy access to put your hand um, underneath the intake manifold and you can, uh, sorry, framing. Uh, you can take those two lines off and measure them. And that, that's what I plan to do. So without me babbling on further, I'll just throw in some footage here of making that bracket. One more quick note about material selection. This is the material I have available to me. I have some one inch by three quarter inch, one inch by one inch, uh, looks, I think this is quarter by two inch, two inch by two inch, one inch U channel, some one in one and a half inch round edge bar, L, T, U, and then some square tubing or rectangle tubing, some uh, round tubes and then some solid aluminum bar. I also have some high-density polyethylene, but I, that doesn't seem appropriate for the uh, application. Also, most of this stuff is way too heavy for what I need. So I, I'm really not uh, feeling super excited about any of this, any of my materials here. I do have some s selection of steel, but I'd prefer not to use steel for corrosion reasons and just not so much weight, but you know, weight is a consideration here. So I'm gonna take a good think about what I want to do. I This wouldn't be a bad idea, but there's no way to mount, like if this was mounted like that, there's no way to mount this on there without having another bracket coming off of that. So actually having one of those uh, a Z profile where it's, you know, over, down, and over, that would be the best thing for this application. I just don't happen to have any of that. Um, I don't mind using some fasteners to hold things together. Um, I don't have the uh, skills or tools to do aluminum welding, so that's not an option. Otherwise, that would be the first thing that I would go to. So I'm going to be doing a lot of uh, thinking and planning here with the materials I have.
So the first part of the bracket is complete. I milled out a uh, table here so that the fasteners could sit lower because uh, this is quarter inch material. It's way too thick for this application. It's just the material I had sitting around. And if I would have left this at a quarter inch, there wouldn't be uh, enough stud to have the nut and the washer. So I just milled that down uh, with a terrible surface finish, but I mean, that's what you get when you use a drill press as a milling machine. And then on the other side of this, I can mount another uh, L bracket to go out this way and the catch can can mount underneath that. And that'll give me a three inch lift above this surface, which I think will be just right. And there's nothing below here, so the can can drop out. The bottom of the can can drop out very easily. So I think this turned out pretty good considering it only took me like 20 minutes to do. And one final thought before I go any further, uh, I think I'm gonna wait to make that L bracket just because I don't have in the catch can yet and I want to get some real dimensions and the bolt hole pattern off the top of it to know how I wanna go about um, putting that L bracket on and seeing if I wanna cut away or, I, I'm gonna be cutting away material, but see how much of this material I really wanna cut away up to that point. So this is where I'm gonna leave it for now. I'll be hopefully getting another video up on this in a few days or a couple weeks. We'll see what happens. So again, thanks for watching and let me know your thoughts on this.